All right. As we mentioned in the news, there was some big news in the legal marketing acquisition space, and that is Scorpion's acquisition of Get Notice, Get Found. And at the risk of stating the obvious, Scorpion and GNGF are competitors of both Attorney Sync and Mockingbird. And we don't want this to come across as, uh, you know, piling on. But we thought it'd be an interesting opportunity to talk about what lawyers who are, you know, working with a vendor, marketing agency, should be thinking about when a transaction happens. And Conrad, you wrote this up on the Mockingbird blog. We'll make sure we've got a link in there. What are some of the things that you would encourage lawyers to be thinking about in the context of their agency getting bought by somebody else? Sure. I think one of the most important things to think through is how does this systemically change your relationship with your agency? Or does it, right? And one of my ongoing critiques, and it's not just me, but it's lots of people, is the handcuffs, right? There are, what does this mean for our relationship? Um, Am I tied to you? Am I not tied to you? And Scorpion kind of really goes out of their way from a technical perspective to tie you to the agency. I think this is one of the reasons that a lot of people, you've been contacted by a lot of people. I've talked to a bunch of agency owners who have been talked, uh, who, who are talking to GNGF clients because they don't like the handcuffs of the Scorpion platform. And what, what I mean by that is the website is not a WordPress website, which means the only people who can work on it are Scorpion. Some of the, the law firms that I've talked to have said, who are, you know, there's been this transition plan with Scorpion talking to all these GNGF clients. And I've heard from these people that the pitch is very much, oh, you need to update your website, right? And that means you need to move it to the Scorpion platform, which takes control out of the relationship. And I I, I find that to be extremely problematic. The next thing that that really grates my gears is, and this is this is not just a Scorpion thing, but I would want to make sure, and this is why you have to own your key items. You have to own your website. You have to own your accounts. You have to own your data. You have to own your Google business profile. You have to own all of your analytics. Don't give that stuff up. Make sure that when you are moving over that you remain in control of of all of that data and you have access to all of that information. That gee to me, we've talked about this in some fashion for years, right? And I don't understand why someone would kind of put on their own handcuffs and strap on a blindfold and 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 get on a path to who knows where because you don't know. Yeah, I, I think you pointed this out in in your post, um, or at least alluded to it. To play devil's advocate for a second, you know, Scorpion will say, "Hey, or the 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 acquirer, or whoever is the the purchasing company, you know, they're going to say, you know, look." You, we've got all this data that we can use to understand who your target audience is and buy media uh, in a way that you just aren't able to do because we have more data, right? And you know, we we talk about that even as, in our agencies. We, in fact, I can point to episodes where you've said we have an advantage as agencies because we have yeah. data. And I think there's no doubt that Scorpion is arguably most data in in digital legal. One of my issues here is that aren't they using your own firm data to compete with you? Like, aren't you training their AI or whatever platform? And then aren't they using that to buy your competitors' media? And, and, and you know, look, again, try to play counterpoint here. They might say, you know, look, it's not that big of a deal because... If we've got two personal injury lawyers in the same area, if they're both happy and they're both ROI positive or whatever, they're hitting their growth metrics, does it doesn't matter. And I that's the part that's just always the rub for me. I don't, it's there's only so much real estate on a search result page. And it's a winner take most game. And so, like, yes, I hear you. You could have two firms being managed by the same company and both happy with their investment. But at the end of the day, it's still a conflict of interest, is it not? And the biggest problem is you can't ever validate whether or not it's a conflict of interest. 
right? Because yeah. you don't have access. This is the thing that really grates. Well, I keep saying grates my gears. I sound like I'm a great your year gears, old man. sir. Great my gears. You get that's off got, my porch, whippersnapper. That's got to be. I don't a know. Clip. That's a, I don't know. So anyway, is that even a I'm thing? Great my gears. Is I've never no, heard that. Before. You know what? I'll tell you this. I'm saying great my gears because I'm trying to avoid the f bomb. I'm 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 replacing that with the great my gears. What anyway, the thing that really pisses me off. Okay. Is you, you don't have access to the keywords. You have no idea what you're buying. You have that no not, idea that, what you're buying. I, I saw that in your uh, post, and I was actually well, surprised. That, I was surprised to see that you were be, not surprised. <laughs> I, no, I gotta be bullshit. Honest. There we go. There's there's our no. explicit rating. There's no way you were surprised. I don't buy that for a moment. I, I, well, I mean, maybe surprise is strong. <laughs> I, I I I I can't believe that. From what I understand, and again, I'm happy to be corrected if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, it says it right in the agreement that the lawyers don't have access to the queries. And I'm like, that should be a non-starter in my view. They don't have access to the queries. So you don't know what you literally don't know what you're buying. They could just be buying and your name. They could just be buying your name. You And you don't know. Scorpion also reserves the right to change at their own discretion where and when your ads are displayed. So like you are in the same way that you're giving up control of your website, you are also completely giving up control of the advertising. So now, wait, hold I on. Will just, tell so, you just so we just to be clear. So if I say I'm signed up here, I'm a lawyer and I don't want I'm like, hey, I don't want to advertise on Breitbart. I can't tell them that I can't tell them no advertising on Breitbart. Nope. You can't take a vacation when you're not going to answer the phone either because you can't turn the ads off because you don't have that control. That's bonkers. Um, that is, that you can't really say, is. hey, I'm opening a new office in, you know, North Atlanta and I want to put all my ad dollars there. You can't do that either. Right. Because um, <laughs> you have no control. It's bonkers. So, but hold on. You said the counterpoint, like the data thing is very, very real. I don't, I, I don't want to skim over that too fast. This is an email I got from someone after I wrote that article. And it says, I've been a, scor a client of Scorpion since 2016 or so, and they have done well for me since day one. They have literally made me millions of dollars. I, nevertheless, I appreciate the information. Um, the, there's value in this data. I would love to get my hands on the Scorpion data to make our own campaigns more effective. But I would never do that at the cost of taking that data away from my clients. That I just can't live with you know look people should be evaluating this from kind of where they are too right so like if you're running your own google heads campaign i bet you scorpion's gonna beat you the point being that you know it, it, there's still a lot of there's a lot of agencies out there and i you know i don't i don't know if this was true uh of gngf before the acquisition or not but there's a lot of agencies that still aren't using, you know, offline conversion import to be able to manage media to at least qualified consultations, if not actual like client signups, right? They're still basing it primarily on pixel fire. So we sit here and like are like, you know, somewhat maybe condescending of the situation, but for a lot of firms, it could be an upgrade. It could be an upgrade. Um, but there are a couple, you know, a couple things that I really don't like. The website costs at Scorpion are, it's a monthly cost, right? So you need to fold that into your ad management fee. You're renting your website. So the ad management fee that they quote is not really what you're paying as a percentage of your advertising. We did it. We looked at a couple of, of, of contracts, Scorpion contracts. The ad management fees north of 40%. You break this down in the post too, this uh, under business model and expense. Why don't we walk through some of this? Because... You know, to me, I've always looked at it like, look, any kind of agency fee, media, and vendor, whatever tech stack you're using, it's got to be absorbed by your target cost per acquisition of a client, right? And so like, when I start looking at this, I'm like, wow, you have to have a really high threshold for client acquisition costs in order for this to actually start making sense, right? Yeah. And I, I don't know how this scales. Like, I haven't looked at hundreds of scorpion contracts and i'm sure there are hundreds of scorpion contracts so i've just thousands looked at probably and i i grabbed one and and i didn't cherry pick this because it was exceptionally awful but 
if you're spending five grand to license your website, that's coming out of the amount of money that you're putting towards your your, your ads, right? That just it just is, and you have to make that up every single month. It's not like you do a one off thirty thousand dollar website build and you're good to go. They license their marketing AI, which frankly, it, and th- and this this example, Guy, it, it, this is this was it was fifteen hundred dollars to license the marketing suite. I would do that. Scorpion, if you want to license me the marketing suite and we can have access to your data for $1,500 all day long because that is really, really valuable. Um, and then there's other stuff you know, that they kind of, of, of tack on. And then there's the ad management fee, right? So when you put all these things together, the amount of money that you're actually spending on your advertising, on the ad, advertising campaign, is just over half of the overall spend. That means that that effectiveness of the AI and the intelligence and the more the greater economic efficiencies that are generated through their advertising campaigns has to be a lot better. Not twice twice as good as ours, more than twice as good as ours. I don't know what you charge from an ad fee perspective, but we start at 20% and go down. This is over 40%. So you, so Scorpion has to be better than twice as smart as we are at generating business for their clients. Maybe they are. Right. But that's that's a that's a big hurdle. Yeah. And and again, I think the biggest problem, as you already alluded to, is is like it's very difficult to do apples to apples comparisons because you don't know what keyword universe you're in. You don't know where you're buying media. You don't know brand versus non brand. Um, You know, you're also at the disadvantage. I mean, you could figure out if they're working with some of your competitors because they put their little logo and link at the bottom of the websites. Um, But you don't know, you know, is your media buyer driving up your cost by buying media for your competitor? Like, I just, that's the thing that I'm, and we just, you'll you'll never know. Well, and I believe, and this, this just holds true for, at the risk of throwing crap at everyone in the market right now, this is true for internet brands and it's, and all of the brands underneath internet brands. It's also true for Scorpion. I believe they are, they are optimizing for the system. They are not optimizing for Bill and Jane, the attorney, right? And when you don't have insight and then that is a very good reason for them to let you not to not let you have insight into the actual data and so to be really effective as a scorpion client my i suspect a way to do that would be to be their largest spender in a market and be a really big pain in the ass to your account manager at scorpion and constantly be threatening to leave and make his life miserable Right. That's how I think you could be in a, which is something I like. That's not how I like to do business, but that's how I would look at being a really effective client from Scorpion. Make it look like you're always ready to leave. Key, I have a, I have a question. And this is a legal question. So you can put Uh-oh. on your, your lawyer hat. This is not, I, lawyer, we need to this be is not careful. legal advice. This is just, this is not legal advice, is, but we're going to say this on the air. Podcasting, co hosting advice. We're not walking into tortious interference of a contract here, are we, sir? Uh, I certainly don't believe so, but you know, that's a legal, okay. that's a legal conclusion. Well, that, I mean, I wanted to draw, I wanted to ask that question because there, I think there's a contract question, which bluntly as a non-lawyer, I really can't answer, but you know, Scorpion is trying to move people into a new contract with Scorpion. The fact that they were purchased, that they purchased GNG after those contracts roll over. I did talk to a, a law firm that is saying Scorpion is trying to enforce their long-term contract with GNGF, right? So I think one of the first things that you think about when you're, if your agency is purchased is what's the duration of my current contract with, with my, 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 my agency? And what does that mean from a flexibility perspective with what I can do? But this is, it, it's a weird kind of situation. The other thing that I think about, and this is why uh, you know, you and I will never be acquired probably and not making a lot of friends <laughs> with the, uh, venture capitalists in the private equity private folks. equity world right this is the game plan right the game plan is you're going to put them into tech you're not the yes you're going to have an account manager someone's got to be able to tell you the story of what's going on but don't be surprised to see this type of stuff happening with other big names in legal right we've been talking about consolidation mm. for a while and I wouldn't be terribly surprised to see some of the other software platforms getting cozy with the big players or or building their own. 
And so again, when you're out in the marketplace and you're making these decisions, those these are the things you, and that's the whole point of this is to really be like, you know, look, here's the things you should look out for. Are they working with your competitors? Do you own the data? How long are you locked in? What level of transparency are you going to have with how all this stuff is going to be working? Because in some ways, it's the same thing we talk about when we talk about like the big ad platforms like Google and Meta. You got to recognize how you're the product and how your data is being used. And, and it's the same in this context, your data that you might not own, right? Because if you're not, if you don't own the accounts, if you don't, own, don't own, it. if you don't own that stuff, you're licensing access to their data to buy media for your business. You're not building the same equity up. Anyway, that's, I think that's the thing to look out for. And again, I know this is probably going to cause uh, me at least, I, mean, I don't know about you, but uh, to be less invited to some of these uh, conferences, which again is another problem because, you know, these folks are going to be on, you're going to see them on stage because they're paying to be there telling you about how great everything is. That's really the purpose of this is to say, hey, look, heads up, everybody. Uh, you know, we've been talking about some of these issues for a long time. And it doesn't matter what logo you slap on it. It doesn't matter who the company is. We're not not trying to pile on any particular company, but there are trade-offs. And I think, you know, most lawyers that are out there, you know, they're trying to run their law firms. And so they're, they're not like, they're not seeing all this nuance and digging deep enough. I mean, a lot of them, a lot of times too, I don't know if you still see this, we see a lot of lawyers, they don't even bother to read the contract. And then they're like surprised to learn they're locked into this contract where they don't own any of their own data. They're licensing their content. I don't know where we are in the licensing content thing these days, but you know, I, I know that that's, a, that's another issue out there where like, it's like, hey, yeah, look, you can quit anytime you want, but then you got to pull but all this. You can never leave. Down. You can never, it's, you know, Hotel California. Hotel California. Style. Right. Anyway, so to me, the transparency and the owning the data, those are the two big ones. I think exclusivity is something to talk about. There's certainly, again, to just play counterpoint, there is upside to uh, access 100%. to data. As, as Conrad mentioned, if you're the market leader in your area and you're pouring money into their machine, their machine's probably buying media better than a lot of other machines are going to buy it. But, you know, if you're a couple thousand dollar a month player, is, you, you know, your cost per acquisition, is it going to work? Are the economics going to work when you look at the fee schedule? I don't know. I, I mean, this is a no brainer, but like you're, you're entering into a relationship with a very, very new agency, right? And you are going to have things to think through. Um, you know, I, I do know that a lot of agencies are talking to Scorpion clients, or sorry, GNGF clients now. I think a lot of people have these concerns. So I think to some extent, we've done a good job of raising these in the past. It's not just us, but I think there's a a, a concern over these things, which, you know, previously, a lot of you guys didn't read the contract all that much, all these things. Um, and you're probably going to see more of this, as Guy hinted at. But, you know... Gee, if I was going to sell my agency, I would I would go out of my way to make sure that my clients were taken care of. And I think that's a really important factor. Well, and again, like I said, I there might be some people that this is uh is great for, right? They maybe they they look at this and they're like, "Yeah, we're going to based on what we're doing, this makes more sense for us." I just my thing is just to make sure people are doing with their eyes open. Just make sure you understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. Um, because again, it's sometimes for a lot of firms, this stuff's running in the background. You know, they're not, they're not listening to lunch hour legal marketing. They're not following the, uh, press releases, which will, we can put some of that in the show notes too. You get both sides of the, the story here. Um, and then one day you wake up and you're like, wait a minute, I'm not even, this isn't even close to what I signed up for in the first place. Money makes a, money makes a, it makes a world go round. Yeah, money make a world go round. Yeah, money make a world go round.